lot of effort by a whole lot of folks, hardworking people just like yourself. You moved Texas to the forefront of our nation's economy and you poised us, you poised us to remain there into the future. Take my word for it. Take a look at the uh, U.S. Department of Labor just this week. The Labor Department released numbers confirming that over the last decade, Texas has outdone all the other large states in job growth, adding almost three-quarters of a million private sector jobs from 1999 through 2009. Second place went to Florida, which finished nearly half a million jobs behind us. If you're curious about the other 10 large states, every one of them lost jobs during that entire decade. Part of a national loss of over 1.5 million private sector jobs. And it's important to remember that every one of those job losses, whether they're in Texas or across the country, they represent a person. They represent the impact on a family. Dreams that are now put on hold. While we've weathered this recession better than most, we haven't been spared. There are a lot of Texas families who are dealing with the uncertainty of unemployment, the uncertainty of the future. That's why groups like yours and leaders like me will keep doing our best to create an environment in this state so that every person who wants a job has a job. Fortunately, as those folks look for work, they're doing it in a state that has been writing the book on creating a job-friendly environment. That's likely why Texas was named CEO Magazine's best place to do business. The reason Moody's Economy lists seven Texas metro areas as the first cities to emerge out of the recession. Employers understand that Texas and Texas government leaders and Texas businessmen and women, they get it when it comes to jobs, especially those in this room who are being recognized as some of the best places to work in our state. You all deserve great accolade, and I hope as uh, you are recognized throughout the day and through the weeks and months to come, that uh, you get the appropriate applause from those around you, those who, um, those families that are living a better life today because you were willing to risk, and leaders in this room were willing to make right and hard decisions. Employers like you understand that Texas wants to wants you and, and we want you to be here. We want you to love the state for all the appropriate and collective reasons that we're doing what we can to make this state even more attractive, including efforts to groom the future workforce by improving our public education system. I think somewhere north of a thousand people a day are added to the rolls of Texas. And that's a two-edged sword. Very obviously one of those reasons people are coming here because they see it as the land of opportunity. But it also puts pressure on our infrastructure, whether it's transportation, or power, water, or public schools. Over the past few years, we have pressed for more accountability in those public schools. We work to ensure our young people hit the ground running when they graduate high school, either career or college ready. That was one of the pieces of legislation that we signed last session, or when we were talking about the um, effort to hold schools more accountable, making Texas a national leader in that area, ensuring our students graduate college and career ready with four years of math and science, social studies, and English on their transcript. In September, Education Week, praise Texas for leading the nation in adopting college-ready curriculum standards and aligning the high school and college curriculum for continuity. Not long after that, 
the National Governors Association, released a study that singled Texas out as one of only a few states to re-engage dropouts and bring them back to the classroom. This represents some significant progress, Mike. These are clear signals that we're getting it right in the state of Texas. Just yesterday, I proposed uh, an additional approach to keeping students engaged in the education process by calling on the Texas Education Agency and the Department of Public Safety and local school districts to further leverage the privilege of a driver's license as an incentive. Those of you who have worked in, in scouting have heard me often say uh, about young men who are on their way to get their Eagle Scout is that you got to fly before you drive. Do not get that driver's license before you get to be an eagle. You get confused at about that age sometimes with the fumes. <laughs> Perfume and gas fumes. <laughs> but I happen to believe strongly that in order for a high school aged individual to get and keep a driver's license, they should be enrolled in school. Be it a bricks and mortar school or a virtual high school. But most importantly, working hard towards either that diploma or a GED. This approach will not only give our local school districts another tool in their efforts to reduce dropouts, it will also give students an incentive to do the work. For them to really understand how important it is in, 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 their, in their later years that they got that diploma. It'll prepare them to be a part of a workforce that we are going to uh, need. It needs 